Jesus does not sacrifice common sense for compassion. Howdy, folks. Welcome to The Virtue Signal. I'm Alfonso Rachel, my buddy Bill Whittle. We're going to talk about, uh, well, virtue. But, you know, virtue, we you know, we got to have something to base virtue on. I mean, we can't be like these virtue signals out there just coming up with virtue willy-nilly and, and trying to dictate <laughs> to how, you know, we're supposed to uh, be virtuous. Um, but in this one, uh, I want to I want to talk more about, uh, um, you know, Republican voters. Why are you picking on Republicans all the time? So, it's, hey, iron sharpens iron, dang it. Uh, so, Bill, uh, this one is this is this might not be as fun for you because I, I mean, uh, and like you, I, I really appreciate uh, stuff that uh, uh, Elon Musk has done. Uh, mm-hmm. But I have concerns. You know, I got concerns when somebody of such uh, uh, monetary gains and fame and things like that. It, a lot of times that comes with a lot of influence. And I've been concerned about the influence that he has. And uh, it's been uh, touted out that uh you know a lot of outlets that elon was at this um retreat in wyoming and says that um uh what does the the headline say if uh republicans want to attract more voters and raising money uh they need to start being more compassionate to immigrants and uh they need to stay out of people's private lives or out of their bedrooms out of their personal business um, this message brought to you by Mitt Romney and Liz Cheney. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, these these kinds of things. Now, and, and I've tried to cross check and say, hey, did he really say that? Did he really say that? And, you know, from, from outlets from, I guess, from Newsmax to Breitbart, it's all is, you know, all there. So um, now here's here's the exception that I take with this. It lends to the language. One, that the language is misleading and it's language that's directed by the Democrats as it is. Uh, and then, unfortunately, you have these rhinos who are going to adopt the same language. But to say that we're not compassionate to immigrants is it's 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 mis- you know it's it's a misnomer. It's not true. Um, the problem, the issue that we have is with illegal immigration, not exactly. immigration. And Elon Musk, being the billionaire that he is, doesn't show that there's a lack of compassion in America for immigrants. <laughs> it's like that, that you, he's helping to support a prejudice against yes. uh, Republicans, uh, Republican voters. Which I wouldn't expect from an African-American, but nevertheless, there you go. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, right on, right on. Uh, but, you know, that that kind of stuff. And then to say that, um, you know, Republicans would attract more money or, or voters by staying out of people's, you know, bedrooms and out of their private lives and things like that. I, I take exception with this because, you know, as we've said before, what people do in their bedrooms is is not our concern. However, you know, when we is as we've talked about before, when when it's a business, even if it's their personal business, the the, the nature of business is to grow. It's not going to stay in there. They have pushed their bedroom lives onto us, where we didn't care. Now they want to force us to care. So, but let me just you know uh, 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 pitch it over to you. You know, before saying this, what he's saying uh, is not new, though. It's not a new thing for for. Um, to, for Republicans to hold to this losing philosophy of um, not bringing up social issues, because I think that was the other thing. It's like stay away from social issues. That has been a losing strategy for Republicans that they keep repeating and it doesn't work. You can't. You, it's not even so much that you can't stay away from social issues uh, or that you shouldn't. You really can't. You can't stay away from the issue of abortion. You know why? Because Democrats are always going to bring it up. You don't have to bring it up. They will. They're going to bring up the issue of sexuality. They're going to bring up social issues. You cannot get away from it. That's right. And if you do not sharpen yourself on it, you will look like a buffoon trying to defend it because nobody's sharpened. You've just been told to stay away from it. And that's why it makes the strides that it does. And as I reminded folks, I mean, folks will say that, you know, well, uh, we got Roe v. Wade overturned. That doesn't mean anything. And I tried to tell, you know, because Republicans took it as a big victory. It's like, no, it's actually it's 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 not. It could have been it could have been a huge victory. But when Republicans say that this is something that should be decided in the states, then what we've effectively done is repeated the same problem that was done in the Old Testament. The same problem. The Supreme Court did something right. 
and gave it over and, and we're supposed to give it over to the states. Well, in a state, you're not supposed to decide whether or not something is OK against the supreme law of the land. You don't take the issue of somebody's life to court if they've got nothing to be tried on due process for. It's like, hey, I want to kill this person. The courts are like, you can't waste my time with that. I want to enslave this person. No, you can't do that. That is antithetical to the supreme law of the land. You can't do that. So it's just like in the word of God when it says this king, finally, finally, this king did what was right in the Lord's sight. But they kept the high places, the places where they're allowed to do where they would go and have child sacrifice. That's what the high places were in the court did the right thing, but they gave it over to the states to be the high places where people can sacrifice their children. So these kinds of things, Bill, it's like I take exception to because yes, he's done great things, yes, but even with those great things, it's like, okay, man, you got money and influence, uh, but you're not above, you know, folks letting you know that, hey, man, um, that, ain't, that ain't helpful. Well, it was a lot to unpack. Uh, first of all, my first reaction to this whole thing with the, you know, with the, what the message for Republicans should be is, you know, is, is to be more like Democrats. <laughs> uh, I feel like uh, my my attitude towards the Republican Party is like your attitude towards religion. You know, you you say you are obviously a, a very devout Christian, and you say you're not a religious person at all. I feel kind of that way about the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. I'm a committed conservative, and the Republican Party is what conservatism run through religion looks like, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's bureaucratized and mm. weakened and, 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 and now there's incentive to do things other than what your philosophy tells you and so on. It's, 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 it's perverting the message. Um, so I, I've been talking glowingly about Elon Musk for several years now, and I should probably clarify this is, I'm, I'm not walking anything back. I just, don't think it was ever really made clear mm -hmm. that I needed to make it clear. What he's doing in space exploration is stuff that I've waited my entire life yeah. for. And I, and I am naturally going to be exceedingly fond of somebody who's, mm -hmm. who's actually getting it done and not just putting out computer graphics of what it will look like if we build it someday. Yeah. But as far as Elon Musk is concerned, he is the billionaire that I distrust the least. Mm -hmm. I distrust all of them, <laughs> but of all of them, he is the one that I have the least distrust for only because Musk has shown flashes of humanity in, in ways that Bill Gates and certainly Zuckerberg mm. and all the rest of them and Bezos don't. He has a personality. He's got a sense of humor. <laughs> he, 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 he mocks himself. He's willing to not only uh, admit to his mistakes, but but you know, promote them. Those are signs of somebody who's cut from slightly different cloth. But do I trust Elon Musk with the future? No, of course I don't trust him. I don't trust, I don't trust anybody with that kind of power. I, I will say this though, at least with the case of Elon Musk and reluctantly, this is also true for Zuckerberg and, and Gates and, and Bezos, they earned their money. Mm. You know, the power that they have, they earned. They earned it by producing something that people wanted and bought in large numbers and, and they didn't steal it. Mm. So you got to give them that. Mm. Now, on to the, uh, you know, like the other issues here. Um, the I, I remember there was a period there when I first started getting interested in politics where they were talking about compassionate conservatism. And even them, I said, this is the worst idea ever. Stop <laughs> saying this, you know, stop saying it. Because if you say compassionate conservatism, what you're basically saying is it's a new kind of conservatism mm -hmm. when conservatism has been compassionate mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yes. We believe in free speech. We believe in private property. We believe in strong families. We believe in people being healthy and and and, and strong and, and, and being able to live your life the way you want to without being told what to do. That's the essence of compassion for other individuals. It's the nature of conservatism. And to call it compassionate conservatism is just to do what we always do as a political party, when I say we, I mean the, the people I find least distasteful to vote for generally, um, which is walk directly into their killing box, right? Mm. They've got the artillery, uh, you know, centered there. They've got their machine gun nests. They've got the whole thing mined. And we just go walking right in there. Yep. La, 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 la. We've had these conversations before. I don't want to repeat it too much. But the thing that was so brilliant about Andrew Breitbart was he could see this 
and he would not, he simply wouldn't get into their kill box. That's right. They would, they would push him into it, and he just said, no, I'm not going to go there. You have, what, there what, Andrew, what do you have to say about these racist signs that somebody saw at a, at a Tea Party event? I would have said, number one, I want to know who these people are and make sure they're real. Number two, one sign among several hundred, you know, thousands of, of events is, is not exactly a, an epidemic. But, but that's, that's, you know, B-level thinking. Mm -hmm. Breitbart's answer was perfect. He said, why are you asking me this? I didn't make those signs. Why don't you ask any of these other people what they think about the signs? Because mm. none of us made them. Mm. Um, so all of this is just, is just really, I guess the, the, the way to think about this is politicians have been despised throughout every culture in history. Mm. And and that's because the job of politician has never really changed. A politician is somebody who, well, it comes from from Paul, po same root as polis, right? Metropolis, politicians, are people. It's a person who manipulates people, uh, and that attracts a certain kind of person. And when they get in it reinforces all of the worst aspects of that person and, and they get much worse. And, and if you've got like somebody like Hillary Clinton, they become just plain made out of evil. Uh, I don't think she started out made out of evil. I think she just started out as a nasty, mean spirited person with some really bad ideas, but certainly she's just, she's just evil on an atomic level now. <laughs> so, so all of this to say the, we really, we really need to be thinking about this differently. Uh, we really need to understand that it, it, it is becoming clearer and clearer every day that it is the inside the Beltway Party versus the outside the Beltway Party, that Republicans and Democrats are trying everything they can to increase the amount of money they get to hand out in order to stay in office, and that they are um, both just fine with growing the federal government and their own power. And the, the, the paradox and the problem, the actual practical problem is, is the kind of people that you want to be politicians don't, don't want anything to do with politics. You, we need people, when you have a, when you can elect somebody who, who says in the campaign, my job as senator is to reduce the amount of power that I have as senator. That's my mission, is to reduce the amount of power I've got to build things down. I'm not going to be building things. I'm going to be taking them down. I remember when I was uh, doing the virtual presidency thing almost 10 years ago now, I was uh, doing some campaign you know, events kind of thing. And I said, uh, here's, the, here's the essence of my politics. Uh, all of these politicians out there have, you know, there's the Javits Center and there's the Tom Brady Terminal, these massive, you know, publicly funded projects. And I wanted mine to be very simple. I wanted to have a, a, an empty lot and I wanted to have one of those big signs with a real estate company and a computer graphic drawing of this hundred story skyscraper called the, the, the uh, called Whittle uh, uh, Tower. And, and then below that, I wanted to say, this building not brought to you by Bill Whittle and then just leave the lot empty, right? I'm not going to spend your money on aggrandizing me, but that's what, that's there. There have always been people born with those attributes, and they often understand that the way they can get power and money without really working for it is to manipulate people into giving them money and power. And once they're in, they cling to it like it's the last helicopter out of Saigon. You know, you will see politicians when they are facing re-election, you will see them holding on to the skids of the helicopter, you know, as it, as it flies away, mm. anything to stay here and, and, and have this power. And I've never understood, and this is a, a, a character defect that I have and many of us have, I've never understood the need for having power over other people. And so I perpetually underestimate how venal people can be because it is the driving force in the lives of many of these people. Indeed, man. And, and you know, and you mentioned about how, uh, you know, Breitbart wouldn't get caught in these traps. I, I've, I've watched over and over, you know, Republican voters and Trump himself get caught, you know, in Democrat traps over and over again. And I uh, like even with Trump, 
falling for the same trap of, you know, can you denounce racism? Can you denounce white supremacy? And I, I just wish, you know, and I, I tried, man, and I just wish, Donald, when they ask you that, man, all you got to do is say, of course, I do. Of course I do. Of course, yes. of course I, 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 I denounce white supremacy and racism. That's why I'm not a Democrat. <laughs> there you go. Mic drop. Man, that's the, that's the, <laughs> that's it. That's the mic drop. That's, that's the all you have to on a t-shirt. You know, is yeah, exactly. Make a t-shirt out of that. You know, <laughs> in, in, matter of fact, anybody else, you don't want to make, you want to help uh, uh, shut people's mouth on that. Just make a shirt. Right. And so, of course, I'm not a racist. That's why I don't vote Democrat. But, you know, these things, the whole thing about um, being compassionate and, and staying out of people's private lives, that's not, you know, the, the Republican Party, when it was built, they understood that, yes, people need to be free to be, you know, to, to do what they're going to do. And, there, and there's a balance to that. You can't, you can't be free and assume that your freedom is about imposing on somebody else's freedom. That's not real liberty. And the Republican Party from its outset, you know, they, they, they understood that. Um, and in that, yes, we want to be left alone. But I think re- this, this is something that Republicans need to be careful with the language of because there's, there's consequences to that. We want to be left alone, right? Left alone to do what we're going to do. But you can't, one can't say that you want to be left alone while at the same time saying there has to be accountability, right? And Republicans mm-hmm. say that a lot. We need to hold these people accountable and we got to hold their feet to the fire and hold them accountable. And stuff like that. Well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, then that means that you yourself have to be willing, don't, you know, judge not, let's be judged, don't be trying to pull somebody else's, you know, uh, splinter out of somebody else's eye without uh, worrying about the plank in your own. You gotta, you gotta mm-hmm. take those things into account, which means that other people that you gotta be subject to holding, you know, even the founding fathers, when they, when they established this, they still wrote in accountability. They said appealing to the supreme judge of the world. They didn't write in there, we just wanna be left alone. It's like, look, man, we pledge everything and we appeal to the supreme judge of the world, almighty God. Right. So but Republicans have this language of we just want to be left alone while saying that people want to be they want to hold people accountable. And your politicians, your representatives, key word here being representatives are going to represent that same flipping idea. They just want to be left alone and they do not want to be accountable to you. They got your vote. They went into office and they're going to do what they're going to do. Right. And, And it's. I, I say this about liberals and I say this about conservatives. Liberals think they're so smart that they feel like they can tell everybody else what to do. Conservatives tend to think that they're so smart that you can't tell them anything. And when these people go into office, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're not going to be accountable to you. They just want to be left alone. So in doing that, when we think that people's Private lives, and I'm, I'm addressing, and, and this isn't just, I'm not talking just about in terms of Elon Musk. I'm talking about this, just a lot of Republicans. Republicans who often go by the, the saying of, uh, I'm uh, fiscally conservative, but socially liberal, that talk about cancel culture, that will totally cancel itself out. It does not work. Um, this, uh, it's kind of like a, um, a, a libertarian mindset. And basically, a libertarian is basically, you know, a, a, a self supposed conservative. That hates tax. I mean, uh, it's, ba- it's basically, I'm sorry, let me take that back. A libertarian is basically a liberal that hates taxes. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's an idea that people will be responsible with the choices that they make. And, and yeah, there's a utopianism right. to that. I've always felt that. Yeah. It will not add up. If a person like, say, for instance, uh, live and let live, you know, don't be, stay out of their bedrooms. What they do is their business. Live and let live. If they, what they do with their body is their own business and all that sort of stuff. It's like that is not live and let live. Somebody in that scenario is going to die. OK, so and, and if a person feels like they're entitled to take the life of another, they will most certainly feel like they're entitled to make somebody else pay for it. It will not add up. It doesn't work. So this kind of, you know, thinking that this is compassionate, that's not compassion. Compassion is, is, is when you know something is wrong, you know it's wrong and you have a basis to see where it's not just by your own sense of virtue or anything like that or some sort of traditionalism or cultural norms. You know, because if there is a, a standard statute that says this is wrong and you need to speak against it. I mean, and if I may go so far is this is what the word of God says. The word of God says, if you stand by, it's one thing for a person to sacrifice their child to Moloch. But if you stand by and you do nothing while this person does it, I expect you to be put to death. 
So this is the kind of, you know, thinking that, you know, the, is seen as, as savage, you know, and, oh, and archaic. But it's not savage for somebody to just go in there and butcher a kid, you know, and, and, and do this by the millions. That's not savage. You know, uh, and I'd probably be deemed as a terrorist for saying something like that. And it's like, fortunate, you know, but, you know, this, I'm just saying what the word God says. And I'm not saying that we need to go out there and be a lynch mob and start doing that to people. OK, but what I am saying, you guys can catch my studies on the Zopium Den to get the full context of what we're talking about here. But these ideas of compassion, they got to be based on something. And when we just make up what our ideas of compassion are, you get anything but compassion. What you end up getting is this idea of fairness by being unfair to other people. That's what you end up getting. You, if you talk about you know, staying out of people's personal lives, uh, like, like what? Uh, let's say, well, it's my personal business if I want to have slaves. Okay, well, that's, that's their personal choice. I, I personally wouldn't have slaves. I think slavery is wrong. But if yeah, somebody yeah. else wants to do it, that's their business. Yeah, yeah, that, that's their choice. Right? That's never worked. And it's not, you know, trying to get into somebody's business or anything like that. I mean, because Lincoln saw the big picture. I know, and, it's, and unfortunately, a lot of, you know, Republican voters had been given over to the idea that Lincoln didn't care about freeing slavery and all that, even though his contemporary enemies, the people who were with him, the people who hated him the most, most would tell you flat out, Lincoln, we know what you're up to. We know that you want a war to end slavery. His contemporaries were saying about that. While you got Republicans today totally mind spelled by Democrats and thinking that Lincoln didn't care about the, the issue at all, which is not true. And, and take what he says out of context. And I just think it's so interesting, Bill, that the Republican Party is, is symbolized by an elephant, a creature known for, for having a great memory. But so many Republicans have forgotten who they are and forgotten who Democrats are, you know, and have followed their narrative and wonder why people can't tell the parties apart. Because you got Republicans following after Democrats more and more. And when I see, you know, you know, Elon Musk, who, 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 who's his exploits, man, I celebrate, man. I, it's like I, I, I do. But that kind of money and that kind of, and he's not the only one. That kind of money and that kind of influence steering the Republican Party or being steered by it. And it turns into a fear, feedback loop where they're just spinning each other into an out of control donut. Those things I have concern with. And it's like, hey, you know, you can't just pander and patronize these people. They got to be, you know, they got to know. Yeah. Um, so uh, live and let live is a, is a great way to go through life. It's actually the golden rule is the golden rule because it's a golden rule. Mm. The problem with live and let live and do unto others is that it needs to be something that both parties agree to. Mm. If you have a society of two people, live and let live is grand if both parties believe, both individuals believe it. But if one person is saying live and let live, and the other person is saying, good, that'll make you easier to, to, to subjugate. So, so this is the root of the problem. The dynamic is the same. So let's take our insanely complex society and, and simplify it, take it back 100, 250, uh, 200 years ago, Lincoln's time, something like that. So here we are, we're a bunch of individual farmers and, and we know that there's town hall and that there's people speaking in the town hall. And we don't really want to be any part of that. We just want to be on our farms, grow our crops, raise our families and be left alone. So that's what we do. So we get, we get on, on our horses and we go back to our farms and we say we want nothing to do with this preaching in the, in the town square. Well, unfortunately, somebody is going to be preaching in the town square. And the people that are going to be preaching in the town square, changing people's minds, are the people who don't want to be left alone. They're the people who want to tell everybody what to do. And now we're at the point where we see our dilemma. We want to be left alone very much. We want nothing to do with politics or entertainment or any of it. And so we abdicate. We leave. We mm. simply walk away. And that seeds the entire field to them. Mm -hmm. We don't like this truth that I'm about to say, and I don't like it either. And I hate it so much that it's hard for me to say it, but nevertheless, it's true. We have to be as committed to freedom as they are committed to destroying it. This is an active process. It's not something you just simply sit back and, and watch. Mm. You don't like the fact that you have to leave your farm and do productive work and be with your family to go in the town hall once a day and stand there for an hour talking about how you should be left alone because that's different than being left alone. That is fighting back. 
we don't like to hear that, but it's true. And and that's why, you know, that's why this, this company's here. It's why the show is here, why you and I are here. We understand that, that this is not something that can be done by walking away. And the reason the pop culture is so toxic is because the conservatives that were in the uh, entertainment industry were so cowed by the oppression that instead of fighting back, they just walked away, shut up. And, and so, now the, so now they own the field. Um, we were both part of an organization that existed here about Hollywood conservatives, and it was, it was kept, you couldn't keep it secret, people knew about it, but we, we kept it private. And I, I, during that whole time, I felt that was a mistake personally. I think we should have been putting up billboards and, and full page ads in Variety saying, hey, if you're a conservative in Hollywood and you're tired of getting pushed around, send us an email. Because when you, when you take virtuous behavior, which is what we were doing as conservatives in Hollywood, we were virtuous people. We wanted to make movies that, that, that made people feel better and that raised quality of people's lives, not anti-heroes and not force our ideology on people, all, all of this stuff. If you, if you come to the conclusion that this is something that you need to do in secret, you've lost before you start. You've already said that something shameful and something, you know, people will find out. So I understand the dynamic. There are people, 1,600, I guess, at some point. Mm. And virtually all of those people, if it, if it became widely known that they were conservatives, wouldn't work again. I understand the power that that has. But ultimately, though, when you look at, at terror societies like, like the Soviet Union or Nazi Germany, they got to be that way because people didn't stand up when they still could and survive. Mm. We are rapidly approaching that point now. We are still capable of, of speaking our minds uh, on, if not on this platform, then on others. And we're still capable of, of mounting an opposition, but already so many uh, conservatives are intimidated by the, the sheer the volume of the, of the shrieking that comes from the left 24-7 that we just kind of want to walk away from it. And there will come a point when we've walked away from it for so long that no one that they have managed to gain enough power to be a genuine threat, like a, an actual physical threat. All of the damage that's been done to this country has been done because people like you and me and the people watching this didn't want to be called a bad name. They, they didn't do this with guns. They didn't roll tanks into, into Washington. They're afraid, of, they're afraid of, 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 you know, of butter knives, these people. We have given them the power to destroy this country. We give it to them. Mm -hmm. They have no power over us. They don't have guns. They don't have, a, they don't have an army. They, they have gotten control of the government because we didn't want to be thought of as bad people. And we, we, we thought, okay, my reputation is more important to me than uh, than saving the country is. <laughs> now, this happened a long time ago, it's, and 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 there's a good excuse for not seeing this ten years ago. But 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 by now, if you don't realize that 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 being called a racist, a transphobe, homophobe, or whatever, number one should be viewed as a badge of honor because it means that you're speaking up for principles that you believe in, and number two, and this is the important part. If you don't speak up, you're going to get called that anyway, right? It's not like it's not like these people, you know, want you to take a knee and, and at that point they leave you alone. No, they eat themselves. Mm. They're constantly eating themselves and for, for ideological purity. They're never, ever going to stop. And so we have an obligation to ourselves and to our, our, our children and especially to our ancestors to fight these people. And right now, fighting these people consists of things like becoming a member of BillWhittle.com or supporting whatever, whatever conservative cause you want to support. And it means standing up when you hear people calling you things, and it means going to school board meetings, all the rest of it. We cannot walk away from this country and expect the country to be fine on its own. It, it, it's a, there's a war going on for the soul of this country. The other team has got everybody on the field. And we need to get off the damn bench and get out there because we can kick their asses, frankly. It's not a hard thing to do. It really isn't. We really are much better at, at, at this. We have a much better product than they do. But we just don't want to play. So we sit on the bench and watch it all happen and cry about it.
<laughs> Indeed, and it, you know, it takes, it does take a lot of strength. It's, it's like a thin line between, is it just restraint or is it just, you know, this reservation about just not wanting to get your hands dirty? It's, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. And, you know, but I, I, I would issue this to, to a lot of Republicans. You could take a cue from, you know, the black community. The black community is, is at the, at the root, at the core of why the Republican party was, was founded. Uh, That's it. You know, it's, 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 we, we've been together. Uh, Democrats have effectively come in and torn that relationship, you know, by their accusations and, and, uh, and their mastery of manipulation. And our refusal to and our refusal to rebut them. Absolutely. Or, or help our or, refusal to to immediately rise up in righteous anger and say, you've got a lot of nerve accusing us of that. Absolutely. I mean, even just recently, there was another uh, uh, tearing down of a statue. And this is a, a prime example of uh, what, what you're talking about and, and refuting these things immediately. Unfortunately, so many Republican voters will get out there and they'll defend the statues and they'll say, uh, well, it's about heritage and about history. You're not supposed to take them down. It's like it's a heritage and history of what? You can't just say that flag or those statues represent heritage and history. It's a heritage and history of something. If you're going to demand to keep the statues up, which I do, I demand that the statues be kept up. You need to make sure that they're associated with the Democrat Party. Mm -hmm. Republicans don't do that. All they associate no, they it with is American history. And that's why they're able to label us as the, 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 the supporters of slavery and, and racism and all that sort of stuff. Because Republicans fail to say that, well, yeah, those statues are Democrat. Leave those up for, 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 for historical purposes. Yeah, we just want to be left alone. Just want to be left yeah. alone, right? Yeah. Oh, leave the statues alone. And they associate those things with us. But Republicans, you know, take a cue. One thing that Republicans lament over and are, and are, and are you know, very apprehensive of is losing the country. If we lose, like if we lose this election, we're going to lose the nation and we're never going to recover. But I hear that language a lot. Right. Uh, it'll be the end of America as we know it. Um, well, you could kind of that that kind of thing can actually happen. Like, say, for instance, the black nation that lives in America been very difficult for them to recover. And the Democrats basically control everything that they do. Everything. It's not in our DNA to be controlled. It's it's just hit. If 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 the kid isn't if you know the kids don't get aborted, they get mind molested when they go to their schools. Okay. And when you have these people who get that kind of power, it's difficult for Republicans to even or so how are we going to create our narrative? We're dependent on all their institutions, we're dependent on their YouTubes, we're dependent on their channels and all that sort of stuff. And if they want to pull the plug on you, they can. They can basically go ahead and Tuskegee Republicans, the same way that they did Black Wall Street. All right. If they want to come in and they want to burn your 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 developments to the ground, that's what Democrats will come and do. And they'll do that to us at any time we can have. That's why we have to like tiptoe around YouTube and say, hey, you know, come and check us out over at the speakeasy over mm -hmm. at Rumble. We got to do that stuff. Why should we have to do that? You know, it's 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 good that we're trying to develop our own. But because when we see how much power that they've amassed, because when you had a lot of those, you know, Hollywood conservatives who were, you know, kind of tiptoeing around things that didn't stand up to these people, that just gave them more power more power and they've got more um, uh, communication power than ever before. And how do you stand up against them without them at some point coming in and, and taking what you got? You know, so when you have and, uh, you know, that's why you had people like um, and I can't remember his name, but he was a Republican, by the way, who made things like BET. You know, he made black entertainment television because, you know what, we're not going to get representation by the Democrats. Democrats are always going to portray us as as either slaves or, or a maid or some sort of hoodlum or anything like that. You know, and unfortunately, BET kind of gave over to, to you know, and that's a lot of black communities still giving over to what the Democrats controlled them to be, unfortunately. And so it kind of like, you know, when it gets ahead. But Republicans, it's like the same thing. It's one of those things that you should be able to relate to, because a lot of the things that you're worried about this being taken away from you, the freedoms that's been your freedom of speech, your freedom of thought of these things that you feel like in order for us to have something, we're going to have to have our own. Are we feeling like that we need to segregate ourselves? Yeah, that's why a lot of the black community does that. Because they're not getting that, fir that that fair shake, but sadly, are starting to or have come to depend more on Democrats for the things that Democrats took away from them in the first place. Now you got a lot of Republican Party giving over to this Rhino mindset, and then flowing over to being you know like Democrats, and that's why a lot of people say that hey, well we can't tell the difference between the two. You don't think it's happening to you? They're doing the same thing. So it's like you sending your kids to their schools. Right. They 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 plan. They're, they're 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 listening to all these institutions of influence of what the Democrats run. So these are things that we need to be very careful and mindful of and make sure that they're not controlling 
our language. You know, uh, uh, and I'll just say this one last you know thing, and I'll remind folks. You know, in terms of being uh, fiscally conservative and socially liberals, because I know you know, and I, I was of this mindset too, but I had to really think about it. I had to really pray about it. You know, you got uh, to 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 be socially liberal or fiscally uh, conservative. Because you got a lot of Republicans, you know, who think that we're the actual liberals and, and it doesn't work. We're the classical liberals. It, it doesn't work. And I'll tell you why. The reason why classical liberalism doesn't work is because you have to be able to define it and you can't. Who can define what liberal is in contrast to what somebody else? Who can make that standard? Who can who can impose that statute? You can't. So liberalism itself is always going to take liberties with itself and it's going to evolve into something else that is not liberty. And somebody's going to assume that they can have the power to make somebody else accept what they think liberalism is. In order to be actually classically liberal, you have to be conservative about it anyway. So you might as well just be conservative. But the first liberal, the classical liberal himself was the devil. The devil himself looked at something that was absolutely liberating and free and told them that it wasn't. Because liberty should be decided by whatever you think. And there's no policy. There's no standard. That way we can't have a balance of liberty. And the balance of liberty is going to be shifted in somebody else's favor and it will deprive liberty from you. So that's what ends up happening. So I see people. I, I, one last thing. I saw somebody made, made a statement and, and it, it broke my heart, man. It did. Uh, he said, in the time that I've been following you or following your videos, I don't like people saying following me, but, you know, following your videos, I have gone from being a, a, a Christian conservative to a libertarian conservative. And I was like, wow, man, where did I go wrong? You know, now there is nothing that anybody can make or any sort of standard that anybody can make that is going to be uh, infa- that's going to that's going to be fall- uh, infallible. It's it's not going to be perfect. I don't base my conservatism on the ideas of fallible men. I base my conservatism on the one who is the truth. He's a truth that could not be buried, even though they try to. It's like, yeah, I'm going to shake this dirt off, man. I'm, I'm I'm back, baby. You can't bury the truth. And I base my conservatism on that standard. My ideas of compassion are on that standard because Jesus does not sacrifice common sense for compassion. He balances the two. So my mindset is based on that. In terms of people's personal lives and all that sort of stuff, I balance these things on that to make sure that we can live in a society that is productive for actual progress. So, you know, be careful, folks. That's just, I want to leave y'all with that. Be carefully careful to not shape your ideas of compassion and their ideas of accountability or personal business or being left alone on the ideas of men. Be be inspired by it, listen to it, of course, but you gotta have a foundation, you gotta have a filter upon which to examine those things because if you don't, those things will become into distortions and you'll have a collapse of a society, we see it now, no matter how well-meaning your intentions may be. All right, y'all, so thank you guys for tuning in to The Virtue Signal. We so much appreciate that you listen to our observations on these things. Uh, we hope that you become a member at BillWhittle.com, share these videos, you know, and um, let's do what we can to help preserve this God-given republic. All right, y'all. Talk later.